Hi, welcome to the next video installment for the Farms Collaboration video presenta presentation. I am Cody Clemson, Forest Stewardship Specialist with the North Dakota Forest Service. And I'll be talking to you today about um, what some program history and some programs the North Dakota Forest Service can offer for you for your place. So, a um, little history of the with the Forest Service. So the state authorized the State School of Forestry back in 1889 when North Dakota became a state. The goal was to develop trees and shrub species suitable for North Dakota. This was largely in part due to the fact that North Dakota is a prairie state. There's not many natural um, wooded areas and so most of the early settlers during the time had to had homes built out of sod um, for their houses compared to having lumber or had to get lumber shipped in, which was very hard at that time. They also, due to the cold winters, needed heat, a heating source. And in the early times, they had to utilize uh, buffalo chips for heating their homes or their plate, the places they were living um, compared to having wood. So they, the goal was to try to find stuff that could grow in North Dakota since there really wasn't any native uh, lumber materials for that. So the issue was though they didn't have any money to appropriate for this back in 1889. Um, even actually for a number of years there wasn't really any money but in an election held in um, November 1894 Botno was decided or selected to become the site for the State School of Forestry. Um, this is kind of where the Forest Service gets its beginnings or its roots. So, but it really wasn't until um, two local businessmen raised money to build the first two-story school in June 1906, then that the school got to open its doors to 30 students in 1907. And this is the beginning of what was the State School of Forestry and the North Dakota Forest Service. Um, right at the beginning, they were two together as two partners. So, those two um, think things would become what is nowadays Dakota College of Botno and then the North Dakota Forest Service. Um, they remained together until 1968 when the Board of Higher Education moved to the North Dakota Forest Service with North Dakota State University and it remains that way this day and that's due to NDSU's um, land grant mission as for being a uh, school for and stuff for the state for a land grant school. So the North Dakota Forest Service we offer a number a few different programs. We have our inf administration and information. Um, this team mainly works with uh, educators on educating, teaching the educators how to teach the youth about the importance of uh, trees and their functionalities and things that they can use that way in the educate um, elementary education area. Um, they also provide information for fire danger and other stuff like that. Um, then we have our state nursery, which is located in Towner, North Dakota. They annually grow up to 1 million conifer seedlings every year. They get bought and sold and planted throughout the state of North Dakota. Um, another program we have is our state forest program. That is our program where we have that manages some of the state owned land that the North Dakota Forest Service is responsible of and offers recreational opportunities for those in the area. Um, and then we have community forestry. Those folks work with small communities and towns that maybe don't have a real city forester and helps offer grants to help take care of the trees within their communities spaces, whether it's their parks or their boulevard trees and helps offer technical and financial advice for that. The next is our fire management team. They um, respond to wildfires located within the state and then even go out of state and assist other states during uh, high fire issues when their local resources are exhausted. And then we have our forest health, um, which covers basically all that stuff, all of those ones as well, and monitors for insects and diseases for the forest, forester tree resources. The last one that I'm gonna talk to you guys about is the forest stewardship team. And that is the main team actually I'm gonna be talking with you guys today about. It's the one where we can help rural landowners um, with their trees or windbreaks on their property. So forest stewardship, we provide technical and financial assistance for rural landowners. Um, some of the stuff would be windbreak inspections. So if you've got an existing windbreak on your property, we can come out and visit your site and provide you um, technical advice on how to better manage and care for your windbreak for its long-term functionality in life. Um, 
We also have a program that is nearing the end. Um, it's our windbreak renovation cost share program. So if you have existing trees, we can help cover practices for that to improve the health of those trees or to, to protect the resources that they were originally planned for. Um, and one of the other things that we get into a little bit is agroforestry practices. Um, we can offer design and recommendations for these types of things. And so I'm going to talk to you about the bottom two a little bit more. So windbreak renovation are, is our cost share program um, that helps cover the cost of existing tree windbreaks repair, basically any repairs to make them be better. Um, sometimes that does call for the complete removals of completely dead rows or things like that, and then replanting new trees to improve the health and function in age and diversity of an entire windbreak. Um, the one thing is, is we are nearing the end of the grant cycle for this, but we will be applying again. So those that are interested should could still um, apply online to our questionnaire. So if you just Google North Dakota Forest Service windbreak renovation, you should be taken to our main page that has a questionnaire um, link and fill out the questionnaire information. And one of our uh, forest stewardship specialists will come out and visit your property. Um, so it covers a long list of practices that either the landowner can do or um, hire for contractors for completing. So um, some of the practices include, but not limited to, sod release, so trying to get rid of the brome and competition for the trees, pruning, supplemental planting, underplanting, coppicing or stump sprouting, thinning of a row, complete row, re or row removal, or complete removal of a windbreak. Um, the thing is, though, then we need to replant to protect that, like I said, that same property that we originally were planting. And with this, we have to make sure we follow the practices of um, or the recommendations of what trees we can plant on the approved or on the soils due to a list that is set up by NRCS um, standards. So when we do that, sometimes we really like to do um, incorporate for those who are interested into some agroforestry kind of practices. Um, and for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with agroforestry, it is the intentional combining of agriculture and working trees to create sustainable farming systems. Um, we can definitely offer technical advice on insulation and designs of a systems like this to assist you in your farming practices. So some types of agroforestry is forest farming. Um, this would be if you already have a naturalized stand that you would like to uh, manage to, you know, maybe it's through the removals of dead trees, mu uh, mushroom production, or some of the other uh, shrubbery or understory that can be growing, like ginseng and things like that. We can help offer some advice on that or and for managing it for a long term sustainable um, practice for you. Riparian buffers, those are obviously important to reduce the runoff of. Um, soil into our river systems to help keep clean drinking water and to help assist the wildlife there. Um, alley cropping is the intentional use of taking what was conventional farmland and converting it over into maybe say an orchard in the long is the long-term goals but still while the trees are not able to produce the apples or whatever in the orchard setting you are still able to get in a crop um, that you a cash crop where you can make some money until the trees are well established. Uh, the most common thing we always end up seeing nowadays or in North Dakota is our classic windbreaks. Um, we do see a lot of them starting to come out more often, but that's where our program can help with the removals and then replanting of them to just due to sometimes their age for them. And then the other practice is civil pasture. Um, this is the intentional combining of grace or livestock grazing a system along with growing trees, whether it's for lumber or something all else in that same area. Um, so that's kind of our bit that we do there. I'm going to show you a couple or an example of one. Actually, I'm going to talk first about um, another thing that we've kind of gotten a little bit into that you guys might be interested in, and that is through the production of biochar. So biochar is um, pyrolyzed wood that is a long, stable carbon that can be put back into the uh, soil to increase the carbon in your soils. Um, if you have any information on it, feel free to reach out to one of our forest stewardship specialists. But it can be through a number of 
ways, whether it's a fancy kiln like this one right here, or kind of an open box um, kiln production right by here. Uh, and this is based off of the Terra Preta soils that are in the Amazon and that area. So I am going to now show